Welcome everybody. Today's video is called Great Promises. <clears throat> the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies they'll never come to an end. They are new every morning and new every morning and great promises is thy faithfulness, O Lord, and great is thy faithfulness. I pray that the blessing of God will be upon everybody that hears this video. Amen. They'll understand everything that the Holy Spirit is talking in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. Great promises. Uh, Peter said this in 2 Peter 1 verse 4. We have been given great and exceeding precious. That means beyond precious promises. We might be partakers of the divine nature. What's the divine nature? Strength. Uh, Apostle Paul said, "But when I am rejoiced, for when I am weak, for when I am weak, uh, then the power, the strength of God rests upon me." Apostle Paul, Paul said that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So the divine nature is God's strength. Uh, amen. But how do we become partakers of that? Peace, Apostle Peter. We've been given great and exceeding precious promises. Uh, so we've got to look at the promises that God gives uh, that we might now be a partaker. That means to take hold of, uh, partake, to take uh, something that the promises, um, and not just sit there, it's like, and hope that they, they, they land on your lap. No, no, no. John in the Revelations was told uh, and by the angel, go. There was a huge angel that had a small book in his hand. Um, very intimidating. It, and the angel said to John, go to the big angel and take the book out of his hand. What did John do? He went to the angel and asked. And the angel said to him, take. He was told to take. And, and we'll never be partaker of the, the divine nature of God unless we adopt the attitude that is for ours for the taking. The partakers of the divine nature. And why do I say that? Because you need to be really bold when it comes to partaking of the divine nature. Amen. Because you have to believe promises that people today will actually believe is not possible. Let's look at some of the promises. Genesis chapter 15, uh, verse 22 or 26. It says this, verse 26. Um, uh, God said that I will put none of the diseases that was upon Egypt upon you. Praise be to God. That means... No colds, no flus, no cancer, no diabetes. None of these things uh, will be put upon us. That is, remember we talked about great promise. Uh, amen. It's, it's uh, like Jesus says, For I have many things to tell you, but you are not able to bear. Apostle Paul said, For I have not yet apprehended, but I strive towards the high calling. This is the high calling. This in Christ will not be condemned. If you have any of these diseases, this is not meant to condemn you. Amen. It's meant to encourage us, as Apostle Paul said, that I have not yet apprehended. I've not come to that standard. Amen. But nevertheless, I strive towards the high calling that's inside of Christ Jesus. Amen. So when we have these diseases upon us, it's because we're not partaking of the divine nature which is the strength of God. Also, one of the great promises that was given, that there shall be no miscarrying womb in all of Israel. What a promise. But of course, many of our wives have, have miscarried. And, and the question that we'd ask is why? What is it about us that is so difficult to be a partaker? That means to take that great and exceeding Promises there seems to be no difference between the believer and the unbeliever. In Egypt, God put a difference between the Jew and the Egyptian. The plague would not come into the the, um, um, the plague of darkness would not come into the Israel camp. Uh, praise be to God. The swarm of flies would not come into the Israel camp. Uh, and the fire and the brimstone would not come into the Israel camp. God put a difference. Uh, why? Not because of Israel, because Moses became a partaker of the divine nature. 
If your pastor is a partaker of the divine nature, you'll find in your congregation his prayers will bring these promises, amen, into reality in your congregation. Praise be to God. And it really is a great promise that many of us are falling. That's what Apostle Paul said. We fall short of the glory of God. What's happened today is that people are not only falling short, they're not even considering, amen, the possibility of the great and exceeding precious promises. So let's have a look at the scripture. One of the reasons why we will miscarriage, we will fall ill, we will catch some of the diseases that's upon the Egyptians when God um, desire and promises that um, um, they were not supposed to. If we look at the story of um, Jacob with Laban, and Jacob uh, has um, been given permission to take all the black sheep, just the black sheep, the speckled in the rings, where all the good sheep belong to Laban. And Jacob takes all the speckled sheep that no one wants. Uh, and then he takes the speckled sheep. What he does, he puts rods before the, the sheep. And when they see the rods, they are, watch this now, stimulated. They get stimulated and they begin to breed. Baba Kusto, Baba Kupai. Amen. But Laban's flock, amen, don't have the rods put before them and they don't breed like Jacob's uh, um, flock. What does that mean? What's God saying by that? Remember the rods represent thy rod and thy staff. They comfort me. Proverbs, spare the rod and spoil the child. It represents discipline. When you respond to the discipline of God, amen, in a way that is stimulating, then praise be to God, what happens is that you begin to breed, which means you want miscarriage. You know, I could be feeling well now, and if I, and if I was to catch the flu, I could be ill for two weeks. That means also I have miscarriage. It means my good health has been flushed away. And I've had to wait until I gain my health back again. God doesn't want that. But, but, but I will find the strength against illness, the strength for my womb not to miscarry, the strength for my body to keep cancer to be, amen, by being, by being stimulated, by being stimulated by the discipline of God. That's why Apostle Paul said, Grow not weary when you're being chastised by God. Amen. Praise be to God. Because, amen, if we endure, it brings forth the peaceable fruit of righteousness, which is strength. Amen. Where Jesus says, because of the, the, the Hebrew said about Jesus, because of the joy set before him, he endured the contradiction of sinners by carrying his cross. He didn't lose his joy. Amen. He was stimulated, amen, by the discipline of God. Did King David said this, Let the righteous smite me, it shall be a kindness to me. When you're going through the chastisement of God, you are so convinced of the love of God, like the Apostle Paul said, For I am persuaded that neither height, nor depth, nor principalities, nor powers, nor discipline, nor things to come, shall separate me from the love of God that's in Christ. I know all things that happen to me will work to the giver for my good. And if you truly knew that, if you truly believe that, that means that you will be stimulated by everything that God brings you in sight of his discipline. Praise be to God. And if you have that attitude, then what happens now is you begin to breed. Amen. Amen. The strength of God will come upon you that none of those diseases that are upon the Egyptians will come upon you. And that's God's promise. That is God's promise. Hebrews said um, that it was impossible for God to lie. That is God's promise. All praise be to God. Give thanks to God. But we have to partake of that promise. We have to take that promise by being stimulated by everything that God brings us. The minute you worry or the minute you fret, what happens? You're not stimulated 
and you will miscarry. You will catch the diseases that have come upon the Egyptians. You can only be protected from these things by being stimulated by the discipline that God brings in your life. Praise be to God. So let's look at, amen, the best example of someone, amen, being stimulated by the words of God is the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus now begins uh, his first sermon on the mountain. And truly, this is a mountain sermon. It is something that is high. Whatever you hear in the churches, the never sermons on the mount, uh, because it would be impossible to be a sermon on the mount except you actually live the things that you see in the Sermon of the Mount of Matthew chapter 5 uh, through to verse 7. Jesus begins in saying, Blessed are the poor. Amen. They see the rod of God. That means happy is the poor. When you're poor, do you feel truly happy? Are you truly happy when you're poor? So much so that Jesus was so excited about being poor. He says to people that would seek to follow him, go and sell all you have and give to the poor. Then you'll be blessed like me. He's saying to them, if you want to have that blessed feeling that I have, it's impossible to have it lest you are poor. That's why I said, saints, this is the high calling. It's not a low calling. Like the Apostle Paul said, Amen. For I count all things done for the excellence of the knowledge. So if you just want to have the knowledge of Christ, that means what you're hearing now, the revelations, the understanding, the wisdom. If you want that gift, you're going to count everything but done. But if you want the anointing, the deepest anointing that comes from Christ. And Paul goes on in Philippians chapter 2 and says, And also, I have suffered, not just count, but done in my mind. I suffered the loss of all things. And as a result, I have won Christ. Now you see the great and exceeding precious promise. It's something that you have to exchange. Like Apostle Paul said, I have suffered the loss of all things, count them but done. Now I have won Christ. Now he's a partaker of the divine nature. And that's the attitude you've got to have. Amen. Uh, praise be to God. If you want to partake of that divine nature, that's the Sermon on the Mount. Truly you are blessed when you're poor. Jesus says, And blessed, amen, are, are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Uh, and blessed are those who hunger and thirst. Can you imagine if you had no food? No food. I mean, I, I, Sister Kay um, said to me in a comment that there was where she lived, there was something, a possibility of martial law. And so people were going out and buying food and stuff. Jesus has said, take no thought for tomorrow, Kate. Amen. Amen. What you should eat or what you should drink. For blessed be the hungry and thirst. For they shall be food, they shall be filled. Amen. That is someone who's stimulated by the word of God. They're not afraid of future hunger. They're not afraid of thirst like the, the, the Israelites in the wilderness. They begin to attack Moses and be angry because they had no water and no food. They weren't stimulated by their suffering and instead mourned. And as a result, amen, they miscarriage. They became ill. They could not be partakers of the divine nature. Then Jesus in the Sermon Mount said, Blessed are, you, are those who are persecuted for my name's sake uh, and are reviled and all manner of evil spoken against you. For so persecuted they the prophets that were before you. Can you imagine if people are persecuting you at work that you become happy. It stimulates you. You become excited. You know you're blessed truly because so persecuted today the prophets were before you. That again is like Apostle Paul as he's been beaten. He's singing and rejoicing until the earthquake shook the prison. Amen. See the divine nature? If you want an earthquake to shake up things in your life that are wrong, to shake up depression, to shake lust in your life, you got to start being stimulated by the rods of God. And all the way through 
the, the, um, the Sermon of the Mount is all about a man who was stimulated by the rods of God, things that people would not be stimulated by. Amen. And that's how you can be a partaker of the divine nature. And of course, the Apostle Paul teaches, as he said, for I have learned. Now watch that word, it's very important. I have learned to be content in whatever condition I have been. I've learned to suffer hunger, and I've learned to suffer thirst. I've learned to be full, and I've learned to be empty. For us to be able to attain this, it's a process of learning about Kustobi and Mama Kopai. I remember as I was learning, I, I would catch colds and flus and, and sometimes be sick. But for years and years now, no cold, no flus, no headaches. Uh, praise be to God. Amen. I've started to become a partaker of uh, the divine nature because I've started to learn. Amen. Amen. Uh, what it means to, to be stimulated by the rods uh, that God brings into my life. Praise be to God. Amen. And of course, we've, as we've said it before, this is why the Apostle Paul could uh, say, when Jesus um, was asked by Paul, please, 2 Corinthians 12, remove this thorn in my flesh. Amen. He, something had happened to him, and we don't know exactly what it is, uh, but he asked Jesus to remove it, and Jesus said no. He said, for my strength is made perfect in your weakness. Uh, Learn to be stimulated by the rod that's in your life. We see it with Jacob as he's wrestling the angel, wrestling till dawn all the way through night. And then he asked the angel, he wouldn't let him go to bless me. And so the angel smites him, amen, on his thigh. And, 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 oh, sorry. Sorry, I thought someone was the door. He smites him on the thigh. And as a result, Jacob's got a limp. But from that limp, that was a blessing to him. It became a blessing. He asked the angel to bless him. So the angel blessed him with the rod. And it stimulated Jacob. He didn't mourn and grumble. He said, I asked you to bless me, but you've smitten me. And many of us in a prayer, when you're asking God to bless you, if God smites you, will you take it as a blessing? Or will you mourn? Jacob did not mourn. And by not mourning, about God smiting him, which was the blessing. Amen. He went on to, to, to overcoming the, 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 the meeting with Esau and went on, praise be to God. Amen. To, to, amen. Obtain the new name, which was Je Israel. Israel just means, amen. The blessings now have been firm, firmly um, given to you before they were promised. But then Jacob now has walked into them by now becoming Israel. He became a partaker of the divine nature. But most of us end up staying Jacob and we don't become Israel. You need to become your new name. Jerusalem now becomes the new Jerusalem. Praise be to God. Amen. So we've got to step in and become partakers of the divine nature by what? By being stimulated by the rods of God. You find that examples of that in Leviticus chapter 10. The Aaron, his sons, offer strange fire. Amen. And, and God said, warn them that I shall be sanctified in those who come close to me. And how did God do that? He therefore killed the two sons of Aaron. And he said to Aaron, don't let me see you mourn or, or tear your mantle. Amen. I want you to be stimulated by the rod of discipline by which I've done by killing your two sons. That seems a very harsh example, but God's now bringing an extreme way to show you that that's the, the, the length that we must go. We must adopt our minds uh, with that same attitude of Aaron, that no matter what God does for us, it's for our benefit. Uh, it's that we might be partakers of the divine nature. But sadly, if Aaron had started grieving and started crying at the rod that God inflicted on his two sons in Leviticus chapter 10, God said that my wrath will go on and I will begin to destroy the people of Israel. 
The amount of people that can be affected in your life by you allowing, amen, the rods of God to stimulate you, the people that you protect in your family, the people that you influence in this world will be many. But if you respond negatively to the rod of God, even if it meant, like with, with Aaron, that you lost your two sons uh, by responding negatively to the discipline of God, what happens is that it ends up bringing death into the camp of your life. Praise be to God. Malachi chapter 3 warns us. Malachi prophesies to the people of Israel, the Messiah who you're waiting for will come suddenly to his temple, but he shall be like a refiner's fire. And who can survive it? It is not easy enduring the words of God. And we need to have our minds be aware of that. It's not easy. It praise be to God. It can be hard. That's why um, um, God said to Adam, By the sweat of your brow, you will eat bread. The Apostle Paul said to Timothy, Endure hardness like a good soldier of Jesus. Praise be to God. And Isaiah 8 verse 13, Isaiah warns as well, and said concerning the Messiah, it said he shall um, uh, be a rock of offense to many. When God brings his rod out and begins to discipline, it can offend us. And the rod can offend us. And because of that, Isaiah 8 verse uh, 13 and 14 said, He shall be the cause of the rising, but also the downfall of many in Israel. Because they'll be offended by the rod of discipline. It will stimulate them. It will offend them. And that's what you see in John 6 verse uh, 66. Uh, it said many of the disciples after hearing the hard words of Jesus. These are hard words. It said followed him no more. Instead of being stimulated, they became offended. And that's that's the, the choice you have. You either be stimulated by the by the rod of Christ, or you will be offended by it. Praise be to God. If you look at Hitler, when Hitler came and God used him in judging Israel, did that sanctify Israel? Did that cause Israel to turn to God? No, it didn't. It became an offense to them. They became offended by it. And Israel today is in a state still of rebellion. That's why Revelation 11 said this, it calls Jerusalem, at the very end is, the city is renamed Egypt and Sodom, the place where our Lord was crucified. Why? Because, amen, of their lack of ability to be stimulated by the discipline of God to turn to Christ. Instead, the rods, amen, has turned their hearts uh, even further. That's why Isaiah 22, verse 14, um, Isaiah says, uh, Amen. That the sin in your life will not be atoned for until your death. And that is the last days. Sorry, let me look at what I put there. That's the last days. The tribulation, the last days. That's what brings people, amen, home to Christ because they'll begin to be stimulated by the rod of the tribulation time when actually God wanted you to be stimulated by the small things that happen. In your life, it's the small things, uh, amen, that can cause people to begin to, amen, harden against the the the, the, um, the discipline, the rod of God. Praise be to God. If you have a big bill that's caught you by surprise, that if someone's treating you bad at work, uh, amen. Uh, if you're struggling with different problems that are coming your way, God is just trying to stimulate you, not against you. But what you need to do is pray. That's what prayer does. To live in prayer. The Bible said, All my people that are called by my name would humble themselves in prayer. I will hear from heaven and I will hear their land. Remember the song, What a friend I have in Jesus. All my sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry. Everything to God in prayer. And that's how you... Amen. The best way to get to allow things in your life to stimulate you instead of offending you is by taking it to God in prayer. That's why Jesus said in Gethsemane, 
disciples, could you not tarry with me one hour? Pray that you will not enter into temptation. Well, that is, is the offense. God doesn't want you to enter the offense. God wants you to enter the stimulation. But you have to fight. You really do have to fight through prayer. Jesus had to fight so much. He said, though he was the almighty God, he had to fight till his sweat became, as it were, drops of blood to be able to, through, through, through the rods, to be stimulated by it instead of actually being offended by it. And after his prayer, he was stimulated to pick up the cross. He was stimulated to bear the rods that was beaten on his back. He was stimulated to, to be marked on the cross. Uh, he was stimulated to ask God's forgiveness for us, but we know not what we do. Why? Because he prayed in Gethsemane, amen, until, amen, the rods became a stimulation instead of offense. Like Jesus said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, amen, for thou, amen, savest not the things that be of God, except but the things that come from man. And the things that come from man always lead to offense, uh, amen. But the attitude that comes from Christ, uh, praise be to God, is that we turn the rods of God, uh, praise be to God, into stimulation instead of offense. And that's why every day, amen, you should feel stimulated to serve God, stimulated to love people, stimulated to read the scripture, amen. But if you're not, it means you're being affected by the words of God in the wrong way. And then you'll not be a partaker of the divine nature. To be a partaker of the divine nature, we must be stimulated by the disciplines of God. And that's why at the end now, we have the, the book of Nehemiah. When he's building up the temple walls, amen, he pulls the beard of his Jewish brothers that were slipping and sliding slapping them on the face, cursing them, that means speaking harshly to them, amen, and instead they bought it, and they became stimulated with it, and as a result of that, the walls were built, can you imagine that, the walls were built by a man that pulled the beards and slapped them on the face, and cursed them, and they accepted that, and therefore the walls of Jerusalem were built, that again is another extreme example, but it's an example that God paints that we must be prepared to receive the discipline of God to such an extent, even if we're slapped on the face like Jesus was, amen, spat upon the face, we'll receive the discipline, amen, with joy. And then the walls of our life, amen, will not be broken down. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. I remember when to end now I was in prison and I remember I woke in the morning and I woke in the morning there was other people in my prison cell and I was singing a song. Now, they already thought I was mad as well but I was singing a song, a nursery rhyme um, is saying Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall and Humpty Dumpty had a great fall and all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. I felt so down because I could feel that I was so broken and I was so damaged that my life couldn't be mended together again. But then I heard, for the first time, a voice saying to me, but the king can. And the things that used to make me so offended, I begin actually to stimulate me. Praise be to God. But then prison now, many prisoners become offended at the discipline. But I started becoming stimulated by the discipline of prison. And from that, God laid the foundation, praise be to God, that I would be a partaker of the divine nature in my health. I'd be a partaker in the divine nature in my marriage and in my health and in my church and in my finances. The strength of Christ is upon it, praise be to God, through the stimulation. Amen. I'm repeating myself too much. Sorry, praise be to God. I hope you enjoyed the video and you've learned something from it. And you'll see that everything that happens to you, God always designs to stimulate you, never to offend you. Praise be to God. Those who get offended, sadly, it said, it's the, it are those who follow the category of Isaiah 8. It said that they become an offense. Christ becomes an offense to them and a rock of stumbling. 
instead of actually uprising. And may we be that category, those that Christ is the cause for the rise of many, and that's those who are stimulated by the discipline of God. Amen.